Well, good morning, everyone. We'd like to welcome you all to uh, our fifth press availability of the session. Uh, we're the Alaska House Majority Coalition. I'm very pleased today to be joined by uh, the co-chairs of the House Finance Committee. To my immediate left is Representative Neil Foster from Nome. To my right is Representative Paul Seaton from Homer. And we also have uh, with us the chair of the Labor and Commerce Committee and the Ledge Council. Um, from downtown Juneau, Representative Sam Keto. Um, so as we <clears throat> enter into our fifth week, obviously things are picking up uh, pace here. We've got, uh, I've had the uh, privilege of having a number of uh, students from around the state as well as teachers, administrators, school board members um, uh, throughout the building and we expect them to be constant uh, present uh, for the remainder of the week. The uh, coalition um, has um, sort of begun to um, jumpstart the conversation of a fiscal plan uh, with a little bit more earnest with the introduction of a couple of major bills, House Bill 111, which um, would seek to uh, change the unsustainable system of oil tax credits uh, that we use to subsidize the oil industry. Uh, the bill that you're going to hear a lot more this morning, I'm sure there'll be questions on, is House Bill 115, the State Revenue Restructuring Act. Um, that includes restructuring of the Alaska Permanent Fund and a modest income tax in that uh, piece of legislation. So with these uh, brief opening comments, let me also, I'd like to welcome my uh, guests from Alaska, the superintendent, the, uh, the school board member, and as well as one of the students. Uh, great that you could be here this morning. And with that, Representative Seaton, good morning. Good morning. And uh, thanks everybody for coming. Um, this week, House Bill 115 was introduced in the um, uh, House Finance Committee. Uh, we're having a number of hearings this week on it. It was introduced uh, yesterday. We'll have the administration and tax consultants up on Wednesday. And um, so anyway, that's moving along and that addresses three of the four pillars of the plan that we need to go forward with. And that includes oil tax uh, and uh, sensible budget cuts. Uh, as a fourth pillar that's not addressed in, in this act, which is again the uh, restructure, Revenue Restructuring Act. Um, the budget subcommittees are fully working and are going forward. They're, I hope that you've all seen them on uh, legislative TV for the first time ever. All of the subcommittees are being covered uh, for the public and um, can be seen and followed uh, the bud budget process. Um, and also, of course, um, we are supportive of uh, having the Resources uh, Committee get the unsustainable oil tax credit system uh, brought forward, um, and we're looking for those provisions to be worked on in those, that committee as well as ours later on. So thank you. And Representative Foster, regardless of where the Iditarod start, it's going to end in Nome, right? Absolutely, <laughs> ending in Nome. Uh, thank you, Representative Seaton, uh, uh, Edgeman. Uh, I just want to give a little bit of an overview of what we're going to be doing in finance this week. Uh, we're focusing on HB 115, the State Revenue Restructuring Act, of course. Um, today we're going to be taking up questions from the committee. Uh, yesterday the, uh, the bill was introduced. Uh, tomorrow we'll be looking at modeling for uh, HB 115. On Thursday we're going to take up the governor's uh, amendments and also uh, we'll be bringing back HB 23, which is the insurance for dependents of deceased uh, peace officers. Uh, we may bring it up earlier in the week if we can, if, if uh, time allows, and under bills previously heard. And then on Friday, uh, we'll be taking a public testimony on, on HB uh, 115. So, thank you. Good morning, Representative Keto. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, uh, co-chairs Foster and Seaton. It's actually great to be here. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we are and we have been talking about how do we move the state forward and we're looking at a comprehensive sustainable fiscal plan. Uh, we cannot look at a comprehensive fiscal plan without taking a look at our own house. So as a chair of Ledge Council, we're actively working on our own budget, uh, trying to provide recommendations that will go to the subcommittee in the house that's responsible for the legislature, uh, which uh, Representative Seaton will be chairing. And so we are working on uh, having a, another Ledge Council meeting to go over uh, some of the budget recommendations and get a package moved forward to the subcommittee. Uh, that subcommittee will be open public process and Representative Seaton also in the subcommittee process has identified time for uh, public comment, but we are working towards 
being responsible with our own expenses uh, within the legislature at the same time we're asking state agencies and the Alaskan public uh, to tighten their belts, we're tightening our belt. So, uh, questions? So do we actually have somebody online uh, from the New York Times? Can you please identify yourself and uh, pose your question? He's not there? Okay. Well, we tried. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to settle for me. So uh, Austin Baird from KTUU. Uh, Merv Keto. aside from uh, fiscal plan, just have a couple questions. Uh, one of your personal pieces of legislation dealing with lobbyist registration fees, that's up in committee today. Uh, could you maybe just explain why you think that's necessary and uh, separately uh, legislation to allow uh, ride sharing services last year died in house labor and commerce and I wonder if you expect that to have a similar fate this year. So two questions, uh, the one on the Alaska Public Offices Commission, and that was actually instigated by us as a legislature authorizing additional program receipts or receipt authority or re requesting that the Alaska Public Offices Commission utilize additional receipt authority where they didn't have the ability to do that. Um, so they could only collect the $250 per lobbyist registration. They could not collect the amount the Finance Committee wanted them to collect. Um, in order to provide services to the state of Alaska, in order to provide for reporting, in order to pro provide for um, adequate and responsive reviews of submittals for reports, we need to make sure that the Alaska Public Offices Commission has the resources it needs. Uh, my bill is actually an effort just to provide some mechanism for additional receipt authority so that the commission can do the work that we have identified they need to do in statute. Um, regarding Uber, there is a lot of interest and a lot of uh, uh, um, support for trying to look at alternative ways of supporting transportation. Uh, the bill has not been introduced in the House side yet, and uh, Labor and Commerce, from my perspective, has the duty to vet all of the concerns, all of the questions, and then we will make a decision. Uh, because we have so many other things on the table right now, it's not something I've dug into, uh, but it is something I do plan on having hearings on and listening to what people have to say. Good morning, Liz Rains with KTVA. My question is on the fourth pillar of the House Majority's fiscal plan that deals with cuts. Can you tell us a little bit more about uh, what those cuts will look like, where they might fall? I know you guys are still working through the subcommittee process. Well, it, it's hard to say at this point in time because the subcommittees haven't reported, but as you've been able to follow on uh, legislative TV on every one of those subcommittees, they're working through the process. They are looking not just at particular line items, but they're looking at programs that aren't effective enough to uh, get funding during these times of budget crisis. Um, and so I don't know what's been identified in each one of those committees yet. I know that in the committees, committees that I'm chair, I'm chair of revenue and then the legislative and the governor's budget. And in revenue, we're looking at a number of what are called indirect expenses. That's uh, reduced fees, reduced taxes, uh, credits that are given. Excluding the oil and gas tax credits, there are a myriad of credits that we give in other words, we let people divert money um, instead of paying taxes. And so we're looking at a number of those that, that will come forward. <clears throat> We've already talked about them in several uh, committee me subcommittee meetings, which have been fully aired on legislative TV. So if people want more information on those, they can just watch the last two um, committee meetings, subcommittee meetings that we had. Sorry, just a follow-up. Uh, have you identified sort of an overall target for cuts? How and as far as an amount goes? Uh, no, we are not looking and saying we want a certain amount and we're just going to force those through. What we're looking for is efficient and effective government, uh, providing the services that people of Alaska want and need on priority basis. And so we are letting the process of identifying what things are sensible cuts to make drive the process and tell us how much we can cut out of the budget. Representative Foster, did you want to? 
Uh, yeah, if I could add to that, thank you, Representative uh, Edgeman. Um, part of the reason why we combine the standing committees and the subcommittees is because in some situations, if you want to attack the indirect expenditures, you're going to need to get statutory changes, and that would be done in the standing committee. So, for example, uh, one of my committees, um, you know, it's been identified that, you know, number of fees that currently we offer discounts for, or we don't charge fees for, um, if we start implementing fees, um, they could raise as much as $2 million. But in order to do that, you need to make statutory changes to allow for that. And so that's something that would likely happen this year. And then we would come back next year at the subcommittee level and say, okay, we are now authorized to do that. And so we would like to do it in these various areas. So some of those you're going to see um, maybe not coming into effect until next year. Um, Steve Quinn with Bloomberg. Um, <clears throat> this is for either finance co-chair. What made you decide to lump the PFD provision as well as the income tax into one bill rather than keeping them separate? Well, each one of those things, the, the permanent fund uh, uh, reduction or maintaining the permanent fund dividend at somewhere above the amount that we received last year has a bigger effect on larger families. Um, and so what happens is you have um, larger and rural families and, and lower income families as well, much more impacted by that particular decision. And in an income tax, you have wealthier families much more impacted. So combining the two together makes something that's fair and balanced and more equitable across all Alaskans. And so that's a much uh, better way to actually get something through that is balanced uh, for all Alaskan families. And I, I think the, the bill, too, to add on to the Co-Chair Seaton's comments, um, really brings the fiscal challenge uh, uh, front and center uh, to, uh, to the House. Uh, uh, you know, the conversations I mentioned, my opening comments, um, are, are really starting in earnest. Uh, we're, we're getting a, a, a lot of feedback uh, with the introduction of the bill last session. Uh, I think the public has engaged uh, 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 more and more day by day uh, on uh, not just the bill itself, but uh, perhaps other bills that may come forth in the House Finance Committee, maybe other vehicles that uh, may be out there. But, um, you know, I, I think uh, there still is a lot of the public out there that maybe doesn't understand some of these bigger moving parts. And I'm not, you know, living any. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> sort of negative claims at anybody, but uh, you know, I'd like to see the governor get out there and, and start working uh, on a, a public awareness campaign uh, to some extent. I, th I think this session is going to be critical to making progress on uh, uh, putting Alaska on a sustainable fiscal pathway. <clears throat> and we need to, uh, as they say, make hay while the sun is shining. And, um, and that's what uh, the House Finance Committee is uh, embarking upon, our coalition is committed to. And, uh, you know, we need all the help we can get on this. This, this problem is huge. Mm. Mr. Speaker, briefly, uh, <clears throat> one of the things that we've got to consider when we're looking at the fiscal situation for the state of Alaska is how do we balance the impacts among all Alaskans and not adversely impact any single group. Uh, having a single bill in House Bill 115,